Hi, boys and girls. You know, I was thinking about getting so excited about something that you want someone else to come and check it out. Have you been ever, have you ever been so excited that there's something that you've seen or something that you've done that you tell your friends or your parents or your brothers and sisters, come see. Well, there's a lady in this today's story that is so excited that she wants everybody to come see. Come see who I know. It's the name of today's lesson. It's for it's lesson number 10 for the winter series. And it's for February 7th, 2021. And you know you're in Miss Cabby's class. Do you know who's always glad to see you? Me. Today's lesson comes from John, the fourth chapter, the 25th through the 42nd verses. You know where that is, right? Do you? Old Testament or New? That's right. It comes from the New Testament. And our key verse says, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. And that is from John, the fourth chapter, the 42nd verse. Before we go any further, we're going to stop for prayer time. Prayer time, boys and girls. And I'm going to let you stop the video this time and do your prayer and come back. Because every day is a day to speak to God. And every time, any time you choose is as well. We're going to start with the words to know before we get to the lesson because that makes things much easier. The first word is harvest. The season when crops are gathered from the fields or the activity of gathering crops. Now, if you've never lived near a farm or you don't know a farmer, it sometimes is hard to remember those things. I used to go visit my grandparents and at the end of the summer, it was supposed to be just about harvest time for some crops. It's time to bring it in. Uh, the beginning of harvest varies from year to year. The number two word is Messiah. The person the Old Testament said would come to earth to save the Jews. And this turned out to be Jesus. And he came to save all of us. The book of the of Isaiah contains prophecies about a Messiah. Reaper is the next word, a person who cuts and collects crops. The reapers are picking corn from the fields. Samaritan, a native or citizen of Samaria. We, we talked about a good Samaritan in an, in an earlier lesson. These are the people that we're talking about. Now we use the word Samaritan to mean a good citizen. But back then, the Jews and Samaritans were not good friends at all because the Samaritans were called half-breed. They were, they were half-Jewish and half-Gentile. During Jesus' time, the Jews and Samaritans did not deal with each other. And you're going to see where Jesus kind of changes some of that. Testimony is the next word, something that someone says while formally promising to tell the truth. Oh, nowadays we use testimony to talk about the great things that God has done for us. Do you have a testimony? You should be telling everyone. The Samaritan woman's testimony about Jesus caused those who listened to believe in him. Wage. A wage is something given or received because of one's actions. So the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus, our Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's from Romans 6 and 23. Now we talk about wages as a salary, so to speak. So when you go to work, you get wages for your work. Now let's look, open our Bibles. If you have an NIV version or your device, look for John, the fourth chapter, 25th through the 42nd verses. John, the fourth chapter, 25th through the 42nd verses. The woman said, I know that Messiah, 
called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, What do you want? Or, Why are you talking with her? Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, It is still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and the other reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Now, we're going to look at the lesson book. If you don't have a lesson book, this is why we put this here. The Samaritan said to the woman, we no longer believe just because what you have said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Now, here's what I want you to understand about Samaritans and Jews. They did not get along, so much so that they didn't speak to each other. Now, something else was going on in those days. Women, you, women were like something to be owned, like a horse or a cow. So people didn't just speak to women as they spoke to each other, as men spoke to each other either, in a lot of cases, unless you had some kind of order to give them. Come and see who I know is the name of today's story. Not knowing who he was, a woman said to Jesus, the Messiah will come and explain everything, Jesus answered. That's me. Now, before this, Jesus and the disciples were traveling through when they should, when usually Jews went around this little town because they knew it was a Samaritan territory, but they went through and Jesus had a reason for going through. He was supposed to meet this woman at the well, this Samaritan woman at the well. First, he's speaking to her. She's a woman and he's speaking to her. Second, she's a Samaritan and he's speaking to her. Whoa, that was a big no-no back then. But Jesus came to change a lot of things. And this woman and Jesus were having a conversation. And Jesus was able to tell her all about herself. And she was like, whoa, you're a stranger coming through here. You're a Jew coming through here. And you're telling me all about myself. Oh, something's up. And so Jesus said, you were, you were told about the Messiah. And she says, the Messiah will come and save um, and explain everything. And he, Jesus is saying, here I am. When the disciples returned, they were surprised that Jesus was talking with a woman. Leaving her water jar because they were at a well and, they, and she had come to get water. They didn't have indoor plumbing 
you had a well that you would go to that belonged to the entire community. And you'd get a big jar, you'd scoop up as much water as you can, and you'd take that home and you'd use that jar until it, all of the water was gone and then you'd go back and get some more. And that was usually a woman's job to go get the water for the household. So leaving her water jar at the well, she went back to town and said, come see, see a man. There was a man who knows everything about me. Could he be the Messiah? So they decided to go and see Jesus for themselves. The disciples said to Jesus, eat something. But Jesus said, Jesus answered, I have food you know nothing about. They asked themselves. Did someone bring him food? Now, you know, Jesus was talking not literally, but figuratively and being fed in some other way besides with food, right? What do you think? Mm, we're going to see. My food, Jesus said, is to finish what God sent me to do. The fields are ready for harvest. The planter and the reaper are both glad. Now, you know, he's not talking about real fields and real actual plants. He's talking about the people and it's time for him to go and gather more people and save more people with belief in him, which is what he's teaching those disciples to do. Ready? Right? Okay. It's true that Someone plants and someone else reaps. You've, you've been gathered, you've been sent to gather where you did not work and profit from the work of others. Because of what the woman said, many believed. So when they came to him, they begged him to stay. Do you think if Jesus came and he had a a group of people that had come to listen to him and you were one of them, would you beg him to stay? Jesus stayed there two days. Then more people believed. They told the woman, we do not believe because of what you said. We have heard him for ourselves. He is the savior of the word. Did the Samaritan woman know who Jesus was? No, not until Jesus said that he was the Messiah. Why did the woman run back to town? She went to tell everybody, all others about the man who knew everything. He knew everything about her. He knew everything about the old uh, word. What did the disciples want Jesus to do? They wanted him to eat, but he was not worried about physical food, was he? Let's see, how did Jesus respond? This food you know nothing about. This food is different. Some plant, others reap, he said. Because of this woman, many people came to see Jesus. Why did they believe? Not because of what the woman said, but because they had heard Jesus for themselves. And boys and girls, I do believe that Jesus had come to change what people thought about listening to women, listening uh, because the Bible throughout is, um, throughout the Bible, God used many people of all walks of life and all genders in order to tell them about Jesus. That's true today. Now it's time for our, our contemporary story. And we have a surprise. Come and see the contemporary story for February 7th, 2021. Nathan, come see, come see. Nathan, come on. Ariana's older brother, Nathan came running into the kitchen. Ariana, what has you so excited? Look, we're serving lunches in the same park that you said you gave your life to Christ in. It sure is. I don't never forget when this nice lady that we were serving during our youth mission trip 
share her story of Jesus with me. Nathan, you haven't been the same since that trip. You don't mind telling others about Christ and sharing who he is. Ariana, it was here that I was able to see who Christ really is. I hope that you share with others to help them see Christ, just like you were yelling at me to come in here. <laughs> Now finish packing before you get in trouble. Why was Ariana so excited? She was going on the same mission trip that her brother had experienced. What did she want to show her brother? They would be serving lunch in the same park in which Nathan had given his life to Christ. Why had Nathan not been the same? He was able to see who Christ really was. He didn't mind sharing with others about Christ. Share your answers with your family or friends. Now it's time for Ruby's lab. You know Ruby always has something to say, don't you? Hello, everyone. Ruby here. Today's lesson reminds us of the importance of being a witness for Christ. The woman at the well was so excited about meeting Jesus that she wanted to share her experience with others. Her witness was strong and encourages us that we mu must share the story of Jesus so others will come to him and believe. Harriet Tubman was a woman of faith who was willing to lead others to freedom and to Christ. Have you ever been bold to tell others about Christ? Are you leading others to believe? Please share. Send me an email to Miss Kathy's class at mail.com or send me a paper letter to Post Office Box 74514, Baton Rouge, Louisiana 70874. Mm, I hope to hear from you very soon. Bye bye. Today, our exercise is called, Where Is It Incorrect? We're going to read each sentence that's related to today's lesson. There is a wrong word in each statement and that we're going to have to correct. We're going to cross through the wrong word and then write the correct word on the line. Well, you can cross through it in your book. I'm just going to write the correct word. How about that for today? so that we can make sure that everybody has the same word. Number one, leaving her water jar, she went back to the town and said, come and see the man who knows nothing about me. Well, nothing about me? Oh, we change nothing to what? All right, so we're gonna change that to everything. And number two, the woman said to Jesus, eat something. But Jesus answered, I have food you know nothing about. The woman said to Jesus. Oh, somebody said that. It wasn't the woman who told Jesus that. It was the disciples. The disciples said to Jesus. Okay. And the next one, number three, Jesus said, it's true that someone plants and someone eats. Let's see. Change to eat. All right. Someone not plant. Oh, it's a difficult word. I think this word was in our words to know. You think? Oh, yes. 
Okay. Someone plants and someone reaps. And number four, because of what the woman said, many cried. Many cried. Many women. Oh, I heard somebody say many B E L I. Okay, many believed. That is right. You're so good at that. We're going to have a lesson overview, a review of today's lesson from John, the fourth chapter, the 25th through the 42nd verses. We no longer believe. Just because of what you said, now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. John, the fourth chapter, and the 42nd verses were our key verses from today. So during a conversation with the Samaritan woman, who Jesus was not supposed to be talking to, not as a female or as a Samaritan, not for her nationality and not for her gender. But she, he met her at the well, at a town that he and the disciples were not supposed to go through. But Jesus tells her about living water that will quench her thirst forever. Hmm. She was at the well to get literal water, and she came away with spiritual water because Jesus was able to tell her all about herself as well as that the fact that he had come to save the world. Oh, she is so shocked when she hears about herself that she goes and tells everyone that they have to come and see this man. This man who could be the Christ, the Savior. So when they did, many believed in Christ because they witnessed and experienced him for themselves. So when the disciples returned with a meal for Jesus and they wanted him to eat, he told them that his greatest hunger was not for food, but for doing the will of God who sent him. Tired of living on poor choices every day. I was just going about my day by day till I met him one day at the well. Everything about me he could tell. That's when I knew I knew who had living water for me as well as for you. That's when he let me see someone lowly as me could be free. Come see. Come on along with me. There's somebody I'd like for you to meet. Come see. You need to walk this way. Hear what he has to say, not later, today. I used to feel so bad about myself. Put all my feelings for others on some kind of shelf. I pick a fight because I didn't like the things I would see as good the way I should. He told me, you are also worthy. Guess what? You're beautiful to me. Now as you go, you have to know you're worth to me. Come see. Come on along with me. There's somebody I'd like for you to meet. Come see. You need to walk this way. Hear what he has to say. Not later. Today. You need to hear what he has to say. Not later. Today. Okay, boys and girls, for our contemporary story, just remember that you too can be a voiceover actor with your parents' permission. Just email voice over in the subject line to Ms. Kathy's class at mail.com. Okay. You can send that and you, you can also send your artwork there and your letters. Now, the best way to send your artwork is to get your parents to send a picture, take a picture with their phone and then email it. That might be the easiest way because some people don't want their drawings to be gone forever. And that way you can have it and then I'll have a look like and I can put it in the video as well. Okay. You can also send if you don't mind not getting it back. You can also send it to me at post office box 74514 Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I hope to hear from you soon. Right now, I've got to go away. Until next week. And while I'm gone, I'll be praying for you. You pray for me too. Because you know why, right? Yeah, because I love you. God loves you. And 
there's nothing you can do about it. All right, be sure to click like if you're watching this on YouTube and subscribe so that every video that comes out, you'll get a notice of it right away. Okay, see you later for now. We'll be right back.